Hello. How are you guys? Hello, man. Um, so just before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that we do record our consultations along with, <laughs> is that Louie? Yeah, it's yeah. Louis, yeah. Um, along with uh, lessons and all that stuff. So it's on the form and everything, but just giving you a heads up. Okay. Um, so I saw you were looking for um, kind of a general obedience. And then also he has some, I saw, uh, was it dog reactivity? Yeah, a little bit. You know, you, want to, you wrote that. I didn't write dog reactivity. I don't know. I think he just needs like basic obedience. Like, I mean, through his teething process has chewed up like remotes, multiple pairs of like cl items of clothing, furniture. I mean, he chewed a hole through our couch. Um, I mean, has completely destroyed our floors in our apartment. Um, yeah, very cute though. Um, I mean, I think he's just a puppy and he's very strong and he knows he's very strong. And I think he kind of takes advantage of that, at least with me. I think he's a lot more obedient with Christian than yeah. he is with me. And I think he, he needs to kind of gain control of some of his strength and like some of his will. And then I kind of need to gain control of him in some ways as well. Okay. Yeah, he's, uh, he's he just has a lot of energy, you know. Definitely. He's, he's like a puppy. He just wants to go out and run around all day. Like um, when we we get home, he like jumps on us all the time. A lot of jumping. Like, he, yeah. He's I'm learning. Cool. He's learning a lot, you know. But we can't even have company over a lot because he's going crazy, and we're trying to you know put him in his cage. Like he knows to go in his cage and everything, but it's very hard. You know, he like cries and he barks. He's screaming. And he yeah. sits there and he tries to almost tip the cage over when people are here. It's not so much the about the cage. He's like trying to go at the person, yeah. you know, like to jump on them, like to But not like play around. The, yeah, to play. Yeah. It's out not of anything excitement. bad. You know? yeah. It's not me. He doesn't bite or anything. He's just like trying to. Okay. Um, for the dog reactivity, what were you, what, what did you mean by that? I think you put dog reactivity, but in terms of like his interactions with dogs, I think he does get very distracted. There was an incident like when I took him out and we like when our park is empty, we unleash him and let him run around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. He got very distracted by another dog and completely bolted across the park and I was alone with him. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, unable to gain control of him and the other lady let her like aggressive dog go and like it almost turned into a whole thing so i think he does get a little preoccupied like with other animals when they're around and he kind of loses sight of us um but he doesn't turn aggressive I, it's it's to him just out of excitement out of curiosity i see uh one second i can't reach him all right i think i, I got him. Okay. On a regular walk, what does he do when he sees a dog? Like without without him being unleashed? Oh, he would probably stare at it and then bolt, I, in my opinion. And at least with me, maybe with Christian, he would probably listen much more. Honestly, when I, when I walk him, all he does is just pull. He just yeah, pulls he when pulls he's walking. Yeah, he pulls a lot. He, he doesn't. Dogs? No, no, not to the other dogs. To me, with me, he walks normally. Like, he doesn't run, try to, you know, run away or try to go at other dogs or try to even sniff at people. He just walks right on my side because I also, I grab him tightly. I grab the leash right next to me. Okay. So I just make sure, you know, he's walking right next to me. He's not, like, running around. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have here so far basic obedience, um, jumping on guests and being excited in the, in the home. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it sounds like you want you want him to be off leash but have control over him. So I put here off leash, runs at dogs, and then I guess a uh, or I know a good command you would want is probably like recall, like the common call yeah. plan. Um, anything else I should know about Louis? How old is he? Sorry. He's nine months. Nine months, yeah. Oh, he's a pup. Okay. 
Yeah, still yeah, a he's puppy. Baby. I mean, he's he's a very intelligent dog. Like he knows to sit. He knows like to get down. He knows where his cage is, his bed. I mean, he's very intelligent. I think he like has a lot of capability to learn. I just I don't know if necessarily we have the knowledge or right, the, and the training the patience to give him all of the training that we want him to have yeah okay um okay. anything um, else you, you wanted to add or like make sure you have uh no i mean he's good you know just he just has a lot of energy that's all he just like wants to you know he wants to pull he wants to he's curious that's mm -hmm. really what it is but other than that i don't think so Got it. Um, ba, 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 ba. So from what I'm getting here is sounds like just overstimulation, which is very common in um, kind of what we hear from our in our consultations is that dogs overstimulated. So what I mean by that is, you know, we've, we've heard like, hey, I take my dog for these walks, the um, like frisbee time, treadmill time, all these crazy activities, and then the dog comes home and still wants to rough house, play, do all, you know, it has energy. So that's like what overstimulation looks like. On uh, your walks, you kind of notice that he's just going, like he's just in his own world. He's not really, he's just doing whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Um, it's because there's no job or task at hand for him to do something because he doesn't know what to do. So he's in the home, he's like, I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna go, this looks fun, so I'm gonna go chew on it. Um, that's what it looks like. So the biting, the chewing, the jumping, the pulling, the looking at dogs, all these come from this the overstimulation of, I don't know, he doesn't know what to do. So there's, it's not like I want him to stop chewing. It's he needs like the discipline and like the structure of him um, to address certain things. So once you start, in, incorporating the structure and discipline the way we like to incorporate it in a dog's life certain things will just go away on its own because now he's settled now he's like okay i can relax now um are there any specific commands besides recall and to kind of address your leash walking um you're looking for louis to learn uh you know i i figure we want him to learn the basics so if you know like did Stay. put it down stay you know um be awesome you know to for him to be able to look those things off leash and be able to walk him off leash and be able to trust him because we're pretty active we like to go out and do stuff we like to go out, like we want to go on a, like we took him on a hike before we had to give him uh we had to get him a whole vest you know yeah. harness for him to be able to us like we want to do those things, you know um also we live in a pretty small apartment right now right now so uh, I know like some of that might, you know, take effect on him. That's why he has so much energy is because we live in such a small space and, you know, maybe he feels like trapped, I trapped, know. you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, I just want him to be able to, like you said, be comfortable and a dog. Yeah. In uh, terms of the okay. command though, I don't think I can think of anything based on um she tries I, to get him to like i try to, to get like him bark. to speak <laughs> I, so it's, good to speak. it's just uh, okay um I, I can't really think of any other like important commands that like we would use on a regular basis other than like the basics sit stay calm put it down get down that kind of stuff you know the basic stuff okay um what, what was gonna say <clears throat> So, all oh, that sounds good for everyday life for Louis. Is it like, like how, like you know, you walk around the block, you know, you want him to have some like off leash time. You need to recall and you go home, or you know, uh, maybe do you like do you plan on bringing him to like restaurants and having him lay down, not move for two hours or an hour, or? all those things and then you you maybe take him off you know hiking and you want him to be completely off leash trained like every other weekend or like what does life look like for you and what would be like like what are your needs in other in other words like what are your needs for louis i think on a regular basis it's more of around the block or 
you know, going off leash at the park. Okay. Um, every couple of months going on a hike. Yeah. Every few weeks, maybe coming out with us to a dog friendly location, that kind of thing. But I think more regularly is, you know, walk around the block, going to the park. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just trying to get a feel for like what program would be suited best for you. Right. Uh, so that we're not giving you unnecessary, uh, anything unnecessary that you're not going to be using everyday life for, with Louis. Right. Okay, good. So um, right now, currently, um, uh, you walk Louis on a harness, you said? No. He, he just did the harness that one time when we went on the hike. Um, oh, now wow. is a prong collar. A, a prong collar. Yeah, it's one of, one of these, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. And then how does he walk with the prong? Um, with me, he still pulls quite a bit. Um, with Christian, in my opinion, he still pulls some, yeah. not maybe not nearly as much. And I think Christian's also much stronger than I am. So um, when Louis pulls, maybe it's not as noticeable. With me, I mean, he's pulled me across, you know, the room. <laughs> like, he's very strong for me, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for for different tools we have, so like we have you know harnesses, prong collars, slip leashes, slip chains. Um, I have a gentle leader right here. You put it on the nose. For, this is for puppies though. Um, we have a lot of tools. So a prong collar is a good step forward from like what you're wanting. It's good. Um, but it's very common for like some of these, some of these type of dogs, like bully breeds. Um, funny enough, golden retrievers they kind of override it. Golden retrievers tend to override the prong collar just because of how happy and go lucky they are. They're just like wiggly all the time. They're just like I don't know what that is. I'm just I'm you know happy to be alive. That's how they are. So they tend to override it, right? Because Louis, think of Louis as uh, like a seven on his energy, he's like, I wanna go, I wanna move, I'm gonna go. But then your strongest pull, right, or yank or leash pop is a five. You're never gonna override the brain, you're never gonna override Louie, he's always just gonna push through. So that's the issue with prong collar, is that with prong collar, you can teach sit, you can teach down, you can see pre-call and you can stay in place and heal, you can. But the issue would be is one is how's the dog on how's the dog perceiving prong? That's one. And two is that if he is if he is understanding what the prong means, he's understanding pressure. Once you take that leash off, you have no control anymore. So right. you always need to be attached somehow with the prong collar. Um, so those are some pros and cons of prong collar. A good step forward, yes, but then we'll get like this: like he does not care about prong. So then the next tool up um, is our the e collars, and you guys are aware we use e collars, correct? Yeah. Um, have you ever used an e-collar before on any of the other dogs or? I had a dog who had a bark collar. I don't know if mm -hmm. there's like any similarities and we used it a few times, but not like on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, I've, this is my fifth dog, but mm -hmm. like my parents or my, uh, my the other dogs were my parents. So we never got them trained. We never like did anything, but they listened, you know, but you know, a Spanish household is much different than yeah. Us, you know? <laughs> yeah. Same here. Um, so um, they're similar, the bark collar and the e collar. Um, the way we kind of work about it, one second. <laughs> he likes a camera. <laughs> All right. Um, so they're similar. But um, for the e-collar, um, just to kind of explain how it works is like how uh, Jesse, he's the owner of the company and everything. Um, he uh, says that it's electric, yes, but it's not electricity. So it's not like flowing through the dog's body. It's, you've probably seen it. It's like a collar with a little box and two contact points. Whatever these two contact points are touching is what it's contracting. Um, physical therapy, uh, physical therapists and chiropractors use the same technology. Uh, it's called STEM, like a TENS unit. 
there's also like they sell them at uh, CVS. It's like uh, you've seen probably seen those commercial where it's like get a six pack overnight and it just like contract. Yeah. Yeah. That same feeling is what an ECOF feels like. So um, just contracting the muscle. The brand we use is called Dogtra. Um, Jesse has used many brands throughout his career, but Dogtra has been the most successful and has gotten the best results. Uh, Dogtra provides a, a dollar type softer feeling. It's still uncomfortable, but it's, it's not sharp. So if there's other brands out there that are like, like the cheaper brands, like the one that are like below, like, you know, like 80, 70 bucks, those are, could be like shock cob, like they can actually shock the dog of how sharp they are. So dog show is more like a professional, like they do hunting dogs. It's, it's the police, the police force use dog show, um, I believe. So it's more of, um, it's, it's, it's a bit more professional. So with Dogtra, there's the stimulation and we have the pager. That's the vibration function. We don't use the vibration function. That's just there and to see if your collar is on. We only use stimulation. Okay. We'll hear other trainers say the beeper or like toner, then vibrate, then stimulation. For us, we want the responses of the dog to be automatic and right away. So if you have all these warnings, like that's just so much time, right? So if you're so used to, if you get that muscle memory of beep tone stimulation, if he's taking off, are you really gonna take a chance to press the beeper, right? Right, so right there's some stimulation. So we try to get the owners used to that so that in the long run, it's always right away of the response of the dog. <clears throat> They're waterproof. You get a mile long range, so you get that distance if you want to be far away. Um, on the stimulation, we have 127 levels in increments of one. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 127. There are other brands out there that go up to eight. Think of their eight and our 127 equal. It feels the same, but we have way more numbers to be more specific to the dog's right. personality, the breed, and the scenario we're in. Because let's say for Louis, you're using the eight level e collar. Four, he's yelping, it's too much. But then three, he's not listening. Then you're stuck. Your dog's right. not listening or your dog's yelping. So for our 127, we can be 40, too low, 50 is too high, 43, 46. We can be we can new, be very nuanced with it and specific to Louie. Um, I don't know what Louie's number will be. That's all kind of based on the first time we, we're working with the e-collar. Um, you know, we've had little dogs, you know, or like, you know, dogs who are owners like this dog is tough. They're going to need a higher number. And then they're low numbers, so like a five. We have dogs who are like, my dog's super soft, they're gonna be very low, and they're operating at 60 normally, right? So it's, the dogs are very different, and um, so breed size doesn't matter. They do play in a part of which model to get. So if a dog like Louie, he's gonna definitely need that big boy collar just because he's a bully breed. On the website, you'll see it goes by weight, but we go from our experiences that does not work. So you can have a French bulldog, it's a, it's a bully breed. They don't weigh that much. They're going to need the big boy collar because of the breed and the intensity. The weight right. is a different model, but it won't work. You won't get success with that breed and that model. Um, any questions so far? No. Mm -mm. no. Um, I actually looked over like you have, you guys have a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. So like we looked over like, like a day of training and like, mm -hmm. you know, like the process of finding how to find a sweet spot for the collar. Yes, yeah. Um, Formed of like, you know, but yeah, we saw a few videos. Good. Um, yeah, every dog's different. Uh, from what I'm hearing, you know, this is just nothing out of the ordinary. This isn't that uh, too difficult to, to address for Louis. Um, but um, that's e -call. And they're rechargeable, by the way. They're, you don't need batteries. You can plug them in the wall. Um, they're very easy, very simple to use. Uh, but yeah, a lot of our videos, you know, uh, we put everything out there just so that the owners can see, you know, how lesson one looks, how lesson six looks, and they can see that big difference of the dog. Right. They hear the owner, you know, saying last week was great or last week was bad. I don't know what I did wrong. Let me help them and figure it out. But there's always progress. e color is supposed to flow. It's supposed to be smooth. If it's not flowing, there's no smoothness to the training. Something is off something is wrong and we, then something needs to be changed. So as long as everything's flowing correctly, we're good. 
Um, so for Louis, um, how ECOG would help him besides like recall and having that office control. Um, e collar is physicality. So it's a physical thing happening. Same thing with our prong collars, it's physical. Dogs are physical animals. So if Louie's at the dog park, you know, playing, having fun, and then maybe he gets, you know, too rough with this one dog who's a little older, that dog can't tell Louie, hey, that hurt, or no, off, leave it, right? Can't put each other, they don't put each other in timeouts. It's, you're doing this to me, I'm gonna bite you, because I don't like it. Bites right. Louie, Louie's like, whoa, okay, I'm gonna go buy someone else, and he leaves that dog alone. So they've been getting physicality since they've been, I don't know, three, three weeks old. There's a really good video to watch the, a cream retriever um, kind of entering a playpen of her litter. So he's got like eight puppies. It, it was a pretty, it was, it was a viral video, so you've probably seen it. These puppies are like bombarding the mother and the mother, you hear her growl, she snaps at three puppies and then they all turn around and lay down within seconds. Uh -huh. <laughs> so from that age, they've been getting that um, physicality. So mm -hmm. then this e collar is almost nothing nothing too different from from that that's why we get fast response because it's their language we're speaking in their language so think of the e collar as like a dog bite we're kind of biting louis and giving him physicality to do certain things Does that make sense? Right. so for louis um he needs the proper discipline and structure which is what the e collar is going to give him his language so once he gets that, he, you're going to see a almost a change in the way he kind of goes about everyday life. So, for example, um, the first exercise we're going to teach Louis is called heel. You probably have seen it as lesson one. Yeah. Heels, walk with me, stay and sit when I stop. So when you take five steps with Louis, Louis takes five steps. If you take ten, he takes ten. When you come to a stop, he to automatically sit with the shoulder parallel to your leg with a loose leash in any environment. That's how strict our heel is. So um, we teach you heel for many for a few reasons, and we're accomplishing a few things. So the first thing we're accomplishing is one the leash walking, right? The no pulling. We're we're fixing that day one. Um, the interest in other, and the interest in the environment. So I just explained heel. It's very strict, so strict that technically Louis shouldn't worry about anything else, right? Because if he's more concerned about the dog than the training, then what's the point of the training? Right. We're able to make the training concerning to Louis to the point where he won't care about that dog. He won't show interest, right? So he's learning how to walk. Um, you're kind of controlling the focus on him. And then we're also teaching him how e collar works. Pressure turns on when you're not complying pressure turns off when you're when you've complied so he's learning okay if i do this this goes off but if i do this this will go away so he's trying to figure it out as well sure. louis will never know you're the one pressing the button so like prong collar right if louis is getting into something and you give what's called a leash pop a correction mm -hmm. he's gonna look at you right away he's like whoa i'm sorry i you know i was getting to something like what was that for i probably sh I, sh I shouldn't do that again right with e you don't get that. So there's no confrontation. So there's no yelling. There's no physicality. Um, there's no emotions needed. It's just pressing a button, right? So he's not going to look at you and confront you and be like, yo, what are you trying to, you know, what's going on here, right? He doesn't know where it's coming from. He's going to think it's like the universe, um, big brother, whatever you want to call it. It's something that's happening as a result of this. So don't worry about it's like him like not liking you anymore or hating you or anything like that. We don't we've never seen that. Um, that's why it's a very balanced because there's no confrontation. Um, any questions so far? No, I mean it, it makes sense. You know, I, I know when he looks at me when I correct him with the with the choke collar, yeah. I get, he looks at me like what the heck. I guess I do have a question. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. I I do kind of wonder like the goal of e-collar training 
is it necessarily to have him trained on an e-collar so that he wears this e-collar for the rest of his life whenever we take him places or is there like some point in time where like we're able to wean off of this and there's some other sort of correction that we can kind of swap for so that we're no longer having to use e-collar mm -hmm. so technically no because there is no other tool that can connect you to louis from 30 feet away there's no tool unless you have a least connect unless you have like a long leash connection then they right. can catch him. but there's no other tool that can get you the same result as e-collar you can do prong um positive only um harnesses anything else you'll never get the same results You're, you'll just keep struggling okay. so after the program after you've done all the work you would technically still need the e-car just because we can't predict what's going to happen on this walk right let's say um let's say he's not even off leash she's on a leash she's on the prong collar right we've heard many stories of these breaking and falling apart yeah so yeah walking up louis for some reason and we hear like a firework or a car backfires right next to you or a car crash or something sudden happens. And he's like, nope, I'm taking off. And he books it. You know, we've heard stories of the prong cars breaking, leashes slipping out, owners getting dragged on the ground, hitting their head and the dog's just gone, right? Saying, Louis, come, most likely will not work because uh, when dogs are in flight mode, that's what that's called, flight mode, they're thinking kill or be killed. They're running for their life. So him hearing that, it may work if, you know, if everything's consistent and he's, you know, he knows what happens after that word, it may work, but why take the risk if you just have the e-collar on and just override the brain, make him do the 180 to come back to you. So it's, it's not there as like, um, a training like, tool. Like, yeah. It's like for emergencies. So like for our dogs, we've done all the work already, right? We press a button maybe like once a month, two times, just here and there. It's just there just in case. Right. Um, in the home, let's say we're going to the program and you, you see the change, you see the difference. He's more relaxed. He's passive. He's great. It's just you two at home. He's fine. Then you don't need the e-collar. Uh, let's say you're going to have guests come over 30 minutes prior. You collar him up, address whatever that is needing to be addressed. And if you find that um, Louis is settled, you can take it off. Or if you want to keep it on just in case, you know, someone rouses him up and, you know, we, we always have those guests come over that just want to mess with the dog. We have that control in the case it gets out of hand. Um, but in short, the e is only on when you need it. Um, you know, we, I think um, for off leash, an owner was kind of playing them, playing in an area by themselves, like away from everyone. They're, they're playing fetch. Their dog is a resource guarder. So he likes to protect his objects. And then in result, if someone tries to grab his ball from other dogs, if another dog tries to grab his ball, he's going to result into aggression. So they're playing fetch and then a dog just comes out of nowhere and just going for the ball. So you have like this, they're going for the ball here. She had to use the e card to stop the dog mid chase of the ball and make the dog return because if that happens, there's going to be a fight here for sure. Right. So in these situations, the e card is on again, just in case something happens, I would, I would, I'd rather have you guys know I have control over my dog. If anything gets out of hand, <clears throat> um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, any other questions? Nothing. So good. Um, like I said, you know, um, teaching cause we have obedience and we have behavior, right? A lot of what you're talking about is behavior of like the chewing, the jumping, the biting, the nipping. The obedience is he'll stay, sit down, come place. Behaviors don't jump, don't, don't, don't bite, don't whine. They're se they're separate. Mm -hmm. So a lot of owners wonder like why would teaching heal address the behavior? But it's the the psychology behind heal. That's why it fixes it. Because we're laying down discipline and structure into Louis dog style, his language. So then he knows. So that's why we see these changes in the dog's life because. We're giving him a job to do now on these walks, right? It's mentally tiring to be holding this position the whole walk, right? Because so, we're, we're, we're telling him, this is what you're going to do on the walk now, buddy. And he's like, okay, I have to do it. You're going to come home. He's going to be exhausted because of how focused he was here with you. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, 
so um, that's just kind of what Louis needs is just the discipline to address what you're seeing in the home. Uh, again, it's all stemming from the overstimulation. Off-leash uh, recall uh, will definitely be taught to you with the e-collar. Um, and then the walking will be addressed as well. <clears throat> um, is there like a specific program you were looking at? So we have like our in-person one-on-one, board and train, daycare train. Is there one that you had kind of like had an idea for, or would you like me to uh, kind of run through the programs for you? Um, I guess first, what do you see the most success with, especially maybe with someone or, you know, people with dogs of his breed yeah. um, or his age, whatever you think is more appropriate, I guess. Yeah. So we always see more progress in the one-on-one, -on -one, like the in-person, but for your case, you're, you're fine if you wanted to do like, you know, if, let's say we have owners who are like, I want to go out of town, right? For two weeks, I want to take advantage of that, do a boring train, but then their dog is having like, like human aggression or something great, like, you know, a, a serious behavioral issue. It's like, I mean, we can do it, but at the end of the day, it's going to be you walking your dog and right. the dog is definitely going to be different with the owner in that case. So it's like, you need to do this. You need to do the work because it's just going to, you're just going to have the same issue. So for a dog like Louie, the board and train, day and train, in person, doesn't really matter. We'll, you'll still get success with it because you're just dealing with general obedience. That's it. There's nothing serious here. Now for the owner, the owner learns more with the in person, right? Because they're there from the start. They're learning their flaws. The dog's learning the owner's flaws, right? Because like I said before, I'm not gonna walk Louie, that's gonna be you guys. Right. In person is verbal instruction as well. So we don't touch the dog. We're only coaching you through it. So again, you're learning a lot more in that in that program. Um, with the board and train and the daycare and train, you still get the one in, the one on one in person because uh, there needs to be some sort of follow up and making sure that all the commands and everything we've taught to Louis has been transferred over to you guys correctly. Um, so for the boring train, a lot of owners are concerned with the, you know, what they deal with the past is like, hey, I sent my dog to a boring train program already. The dog was great when the trainer was there, but then the trainer left, the dog was a mess, right? It, nothing, I, you know, I said, you know, I said the commands, the dog wouldn't listen. Is that that doesn't happen with the e-car because let's say in the videos, I'm training a dog, I'm on 30. When I press the button on 30 and you press the button on 30, it's still 30. So there's right. no stronger than her or she's more stricter than him it's 30 is 30 for everyone it doesn't change so everything is consistent does it make sense yeah. yeah um any other questions i don't think so um i think so ideally um we are going on a trip in march um mm -hmm. towards the end of the month i believe um so Ideally, we would want him to be trained before then so that he can stay with family and we feel confident with that and they feel confident with that. Or we do the two-week board and train during that time to try to, like you said, maximize that and you know make it as convenient as possible. Right. Um, I think the concern for us is just, you know, what's going to be the most successful. But I think feeling like you said 30 is 30 it's not necessarily that you're creating a different bond with the dog than we will be it's you know the behavior is the behavior right. so it's I, a discipline yeah um so i think what do you think the two week um when would we be able to start uh the train we started with the in-person um definitely pretty soon i have a lot availability currently i don't know my schedule I have, a, I have an assistant who kind of sets that up for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that aware of it, <clears throat> but the um, uh, yeah, I would have to, she would have to let you know about that. So, so after this after this consultation, mm -hmm. she's gonna send you a follow up um, with the programs that kind of I'll I'll, I'll talk about with the prices, and right. you can kind of talk to her about like availability, seeing what's you know if if you're able to reach that time before March for in-person or, you know, if, if not, 
to the foreign training, either, either would work for you. Um, her name is Tina, so she'll kind of speak to you about the availability there. Um, but, but, but what I was about to say. So program wise for Louie, I'm thinking minimum, like from what I'm hearing from what you're needing is two weeks is fine. Two weeks is gonna be good. We have the one week, we have the three week, we have a four week. The one week is just to layer in the foundation and then you guys can see the rest of the work. The two week is, is recommended because it gives us more time to almost proof everything that second week. So then he goes home like cleaner in a way. Um, and we also um, kind of do more stuff with him. So for the two week boring train, you get two videos. The first video is the kind of the, the first time he's learning all the commands, heal, stay, sit down, come and place. Um, are you familiar with what places? No. Mm -mm. Places, go to your bed, don't move for three hours, two hours, whatever it is. And then he can sit, stay, uh, he can sit, stand, lay down, chew the bone, I don't care stay in the bed and then be relaxed on it. That's place. <clears throat> so where he's teach we're teaching him all these commands. You're seeing them all done on video. So you're seeing the first time he's reacting to the e collar kind of like we saw when I'm playing the number. You're seeing that. Um, and then you're seeing how he progresses. On that second week video, it's us transferring the obedience to a 30 foot long leash to kind of proof everything and kind of um, get him to off leash control for you guys, getting him ready for that. Um, you also get four hours of one-on-one -on -one time with the trainer. So, um, you know, you're getting your videos, you watch them, um, you're getting familiar with it. Come first lesson, you already have some sort of, uh, what is it, familiarity with the training. You can schedule your follow-ups however you like. If you are going out of town, it's probably gonna be a pump pickup. That's probably when it will happen. But uh, let's say you're only going out of town for a week, but you wanna do the two week, when you come back after this first week, you can schedule a follow-up in the middle if you'd like to see what's been happening. <clears throat> I think do like another one on arrival or however you want to work with that. It's all up to you and how you need it. Again, we do recommend it as soon as possible so that you go home with some sort of knowledge with it. Um, he'll be able to play with dogs here, so we'll socialize him. Um, is he social or has he played with other dogs before? Yeah, he plays with other dogs. Yeah. Perfect. Good. He's so he's so shy, but oh, he, shy. yeah, he's just. Um, we've had like a problem at the park when another dog tried to be aggressive with him, mm -hmm. so I kinda like set, like get the other dog away. So he got scared of that, and it happened with another dog too. So I he's feel like that kind of got him skittish. scared. Yeah, I think he's a little skittish. But other than that, when like the dog is about his size or smaller, he runs around with it. They're crazy. Uh, perfect. So um, he'll continue to be socialized. Obviously, we have it, you know, it's very structured here right now. There are 50, 40, 45 ish dogs right now in this room, and everything's quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so for our play groups, um, from what you're telling me, we can, you know, pair him with good energy and, and where he will have most success with. So <clears throat> he'll get to socialize. He'll be doing duration work where it's you're on, he's on the bed because um, there's like the kennels here, playpen, playpen, playpen over there, treadmills. He'll get to we'll teach him how to walk on a treadmill as well, and then the duration mats, the place beds are in the middle, so he's in the middle of everything and he's supposed to remain passive on the beds. So he'll be doing doing duration work, and then treadmill time. So he's getting a lot of activity throughout the day. A regular daycare dog is just play and rest and treadmill. So it's okay. an hour activity, an hour rest, an hour activity, an hour rest. Um, if he's doing the boring training, he's gonna get more activity. So um, the resting is mostly like the duration part. He's also gonna be getting training walks. So there's a dog park right here. And then there's a Home Depot right around the corner. So we take our dogs to Home Depot. Right, yeah. To kind of make sure that the commands are applicable outside. Because if the commands don't work and Home Depot are outside, then He's great here, but then, like, what's the point of that? So we need to make sure everything's transferring um, and outdoor activities. So what we like to do is we walk around the dog park, go to Home Depot, and then we come back as a training walk for him. Um, what else about the boring train? Um, if they aren't, if he's not training, treadmill, walking, playing, or anything like that, he's resting, and he'll be in a kennel or a crate 
So we'll continue to kind of create training uh, um, and kind of address what the, him wanting to get out. So we'll continue that. Um, bah, 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 bah. Overnight, um, we have like our boarding area. So it's like a carpeted, um, heated and cooling room. Um, and he'll be kenneled for his, his overnight uh, sleeping time. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't like overnight. You know, yeah. He don't like overnight. We so, tried to get him one day in the kennel, like while we were gone, because he was destroying like our furniture and our floors. So we decided to leave him in the kennel. And we actually got a text from our apartment company literally saying that our neighbors our were complaining that our dog was in distress the entire day. Okay. Uh, did he break out of it? No. Oh, he broke out. Uh, like a few times. He has before, yeah, but not that day. Times. Since but, I think we got this new cage, he's been yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. it has two locks now. The other one had one lock in the middle, and I don't know how he was opening it. Got it. So, okay. So we'll continue that. Um, if we find that he keeps breaking out, um, he, well, he, broken out in a while since we've gotten this new cage and it's like a two lock the other one only had one in the middle since yeah he doesn't then, break he's out been fine one. he's yeah. been fine okay yeah. the initial yeah. one. um so we'll we'll continue to kind of keep it consistent here uh letting him know that hey you know because we, we need the harmony here we need everything everything to be quiet and structured so we'll continue that um if there anything else any other questions about the boarding train or the in-person uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think so. And then the board, they will get two meals a day and we well, whatever you want. Bring our, uh, his own food. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. They'll explain to you how we, what we take. So we only take food and any medications, no blankets or any toys like that. Okay. Uh, because we find that dogs just rip it up and then or poop on it and got to it's more work. <laughs> um, so for Louie, it's just, just the kibble and then, or whatever he gets raw, whatever it is, and just, you know, portioning it correctly. And then again, they'll, they'll let you know how, what to bring and everything like that. Okay. Uh, for another thing for the boarding train. So on the follow-up email, Tina is going to send you, um, the shot records that we need. So we need a fecal exam that says negative. <clears throat> and she's also going to send you a form that needs to be signed just like an agreement type form um she's also going to send you the eclair i recommend and uh, usually for boring trains owners tend to buy it from us so we sell them as well so you buy it from us we just pull off the shelf and we have it here so it's just pretty simple um you do have the option to order it yourself so we can go ahead and drop it off for you or deliver it to you if you look on Amazon, they're the same price as well. So however you want to go about it, it's just up to you uh, from there. Um, so that's for train. So the in-person, we have this, the three-week program, the six-week program, the nine and 12. Think of the six-week program as you walk your dog along the block, you have that structured feel, you need recall, and then you go home. That's the six-week program. Okay. The nine week is like you're going to take them to outdoor restaurants and patios and stuff like that. So you need more more stationary control. And then the 12 week is hiking off these stuff like that. So you're more in like the six week program, two classes heal, two classes recall. And then the rest, we can see what changes, what it doesn't change, and we can address it head on. Or if you're like, I want to learn more commands, then we can cover more commands. After the six week program, if you're like, man, I... I really like the results. I want to learn more. I want to learn more commands with Louie. You can add, you can purchase a three week program to add more classes um, to your program. Um, an hour, once a week. So for example, Tuesdays at uh, 10, 15, six times we meet for an hour. We teach you one topic at a time. So we're not overwhelming you with information. We do in home, we do at the facility as well. So you can come here of the weather and everything you, you know uh, we've been operating at the facility uh, we have a, a really really large training floor so it gives us a ton of room to practice recall and all the other commands um again it's verbal instruction we're not touching the dog you're doing all the work um if we do see a we're in a situation we're like okay you guys need help or we can we'll, we'll address the dog and everything like that um 
what else? On the calendar, you get those six slots if you choose a six week program, but then you get plus one. The plus one is in case, um, you know, life happens, in case you guys need to cancel or reschedule, you have a slot reserved for you as an extra. Once you've used that extra slot, you'll have to wait to get back on the calendar for more availability to continue the program. Um, any questions about the in-person program? No. 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 So you have your options. Um, again, whichever one you choose, the results will be the same. It's just, you're not learning as much as the in-person, <clears throat> but again, you're, this is just, it sounds just like kind of like basic general B and stuff um, and behavior stuff. So um, I don't need an answer now. You'll let Tina know what your answer is and she'll, because if you do the board and train program, Tina doesn't handle that stuff. That's our kennel manager here, kind of sets up the billing and the booking and the records and all that stuff. So she'll forward you to another assistant, Elizabeth. She'll help you there. If you're gonna go with me or Jesse, because you have you have me or Jesse to choose from, um, she'll well the assistants like Tina Maria will work with you. So it just depends on whatever you go through, they'll forward you to the correct person. Um, what else? Any other questions about training, e collar programs, anything like that? No, I don't think so. You covered everything. Perfect. Okay. Um, other than that, um, if anything comes up, any other questions um, arise, uh, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you. Other than that, just keep a lookout for Tina's email uh, with the information we talked about, the programs and prices. <clears throat> and, um, oh, one quick question. Um, how much does Louis weigh? Roughly hmm. 60 pounds, 50 pounds. Maybe a little happier. Sounds good. Um, other than that, I think we covered everything. Um, so like I said, just keep an eye out for that email and um, we'll be in touch. Okay, okay. I have a question. Um, what was the name of the dog collar? Okay. So it's called Dog Tra, D-O-G-T-R-A. And you're gonna be, you're gonna wanna get the black edition. It's called the 1900 S black edition. There is another model um, called the 1900S, but it's not, there's no black edition. Okay. There's a big difference between the two. So you, you want to get the black edition. Okay. Okay. Black edition. Okay. Got it. All right. For sure. I think okay. that's it. Anything else? No, that's it. So. All right, guys. It was very nice speaking with you. Um, Christian. And then uh, I forgot your name was. Haley. Nice meeting you guys. And uh, like I said, we'll be in touch. Thank you, man. Thanks. Nice meeting you too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. Sure.